Ah, now let's return to uh, the Spotify debut on the New York Stock Exchange. It comes as tech stocks face an unprecedented crisis of confidence, and that's not only the challenge for Spotify. If you join me at the Crespi's Business Jukebox, I'm sure we'll find a tune or two worthy of playing. Now, the first question, of course, for any good, sensible uh, subscriber, is how do you get more paid subscriber numbers? Getting subscriptions up is important. 71 million people currently pay Spotify subscriptions, but 90 million use its service for free. Now, it puts up with adverts between tracks. I used to be like that. I've just taken a paid subscription. Converting people like me from freebies to pays is the key. At the same time, it's fending off rivals, which bundle streams with other content. It's a tricky one that Spotify seems to have managed so far. Now, as Spotify's numbers increase and grow, so have the losses. This should be the turnaround year. But the projections that the losses decline from around $460 million to just over $400 million a year. And most crucially, arguably, besides keeping me happy or pay the bills, you've got to keep the artists happy. Taylor Swift bought her music in 2014 in a dispute over her value. However, truth be told, she did return some three years later. So let's put this in terms, we've heard about it from Wall Street's point of view, from the investor's point of view. Now, the music point of view, Gene Simmons is the frontman of the veteran rock group Crit Kiss. He also believes new artists are getting short change. Gene, good to see you, sir. You join me from Los Angeles. Nice to see you again, Richard. I remember when you were over at the house, uh... But that's just for you and I. That is just for you and I, and it's not a visit I will forget in any any in any lifetime nearby. <laughs> Gene, what? Okay, Spotify has opened up an entire new vista for artists to get their music played and into the hands of different people. But you say it's not a fair deal. Oh, I think uh, fair is being kind. Look, it doesn't affect me, and I've said this a few times before. Kisses America's number one gold record award-winning group of all time. But, you know, the real money, I'm afraid uh, people get very upset when I use that word, is in live concerts and all that stuff. Recorded music has become, unfortunately, like uh, throwaway. It's in the cloud. It's over here. It's over there. So people can get it for free. Why should they pay for it? But I think you correctly position this in, the, in terms of a business model. And that's why I don't want to comment wax poetic or prolific on the, in that area. I want to go back to the poor starving artist who's writing their first songs and recording it and so on and so forth. Spotify is worth $25 billion or so, they say. Record companies have uh, invested in it. They're getting paid. Spotify is getting paid. Ad revenue, if that's the model, or this and that. Everybody's getting paid except the people that create the stuff that you're streaming. And on the day... When there's a revolution and oh. legislators wake up to the fact that the people that are getting shortchanged are not the fans, not, right. not, not anybody except the artists that create the music that goes out there, there's going to be hell to pay. So Spotify would say, of course, that they do pay the artists. We're talking really, uh, it's like the old, <laughs> uh, well, it's like the old line, you know, we're, we're talk, we're, we know the price, now we're just arguing about the value. Or the other way around. I mean, that's really what you're saying. You want them to be. The paid. problem is, the problem is, there is no discussion or argument. The problem is that legislators don't understand what publishing writers' royalties or or anything is. They just look at. I mean, Napster came in, and everybody, you know, were sitting on their thumbs. Record companies included. Right. They had no idea of the tsunami that was coming. So it's going to take a while for the laws to change. Trust me, they will change because on the day when all the artists or most of them stand up and say okay so we're out of we're out of streaming my stuff the beatles held out forever something's got to change there is no business but model there's no, that works but there's for new no, artists but until artists withdraw their support as taylor swift did that's but right then came back in and you know you know as well as i do it's people like you it's the big names that have to withdraw on the back of saying give more to those at the that's, bottom that's precisely the point that, uh, you know, there's a historical lesson. I used to teach sixth grade, blah, blah, blah. Either it was Sparta or the Trojans. The men would constantly go to war. That was their business model. The women didn't want the men to go to war, so they decided to withhold sex. Guess what happened? The men didn't go to war. So on the day that the writers, performers, and so on wake up and force legislators to pass laws to make this 
a viable business for the people that so, create all the stuff that everybody is streaming. So everybody's getting paid so billions here, billions there, the, except the people that write the songs. Which, you know, you, you, you're a political realist. Um, are the votes in this issue to get legislators to actually take this up? Why should they? I mean, we're going to be talking in a moment or two about, um, you know, Oklahoma teachers uh, and money for these. I call it, I call it the Hillary uh, syndrome. Go on. When, when you've got famous people right in front of the White House going, they're stealing my material or words to that effect. And when you have enough known faces, the masses are swayed. That's what happens. Stocks plummet. Look, I don't know if you know Rihanna or a few others. They opined on social media that they no longer follow a certain technological, uh, I don't want to say their brand, because they're st as soon as these uh, ladies, uh, you know, with their huge social media said they're no longer following that, the stocks plummeted. So there is power to be had in artists getting together and deciding I don't want to give away right. my stuff for micro pennies on the dollar. In the old right. days, you'd sell one song, two songs on both sides for a buck twenty, and then it went down. Right. And now it's micro pennies. So last last question, sir. Uh, we know it's a battle. Spotify has seventy odd million and ninety three million free. You've got Apple Music. You've got Pandora. Can they all survive? My friends in Wall Street, who I speak with regularly because I'm involved in a few ventures myself, uh, are very bullish on Spotify. They've been able, you know, it's a Swedish company. They've been able to figure out somehow, somewhere, uh, how to be at the right place at the right time with the right thing. Spotify is still the big dog on the block. Uh, people still prefer that over Pandora and some other things. But anything is possible. But let me tell you what I would do. Go on. What I would do is to is what Netflix did to the movie industry is to create content that you can't avoid. So if right. for, uh, argue, if Spotify came to us and say, "Kiss, you're going to do the last show ever. It's only available <laughs> on Spotify for X number of dollars." All of a sudden, you have millions of people coming on and creating a new business model, which is exclusive right. programming. Got it. Anybody can listen to the Beatles and Led Zeppelin and Kiss on anywhere and everything. But if you create programming, you're going to get subscribers. And I want a big slice of that because I'm really important. We would not disagree, sir. Let's not leave it too long before we get together again and talk about these issues. Thank you, sir. My best to you.